Hey, let's get the left side of this engine buttoned up and test some of the charging system. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Sometimes you gotta pause and just say, I'm cleaning up my bench before I move forward. I have reached that point. Um, you can see on the left I'm done sanding all of these parts, but I got sandpaper everywhere. Time to clean up here and uh, then we can move forward with some clean bench space and uh, test our stator. Okay, so I've got this left hand cover all polished up and um, I don't know if I mentioned in previous videos, but the one that was on my bike, the bike had been laid down, it was really scratched up, uh, but the charging system was working very well in, in that, well, the starter, or stator, excuse me. Um, and I know that because I had been riding that bike and I had tested the entire system and uh, things were working well. So I bought this one off of eBay with less scratches on it and uh, you know, I figured I could get that polished up a little bit better. And it came with a stator that I don't know anything about. I know my old one worked, uh, but this was the one that was in it. Um, I guess I'm going to test this one first, and if it seems good, we'll run with it. So, how do we do that? Um, essentially, you've got three fields, or three phases, and these things are kicking out um, alternating current, AC, and uh, your voltage regulator and rectifier is what uh, brings that down to, uh, you know, call it 12-ish volts and uh, turns it to DC, direct current. Um, for now, there's only two tests we can run on this. They are both a uh, ohms resistance test. And with, for that, you need a simple multimeter. This is a cheap thing they give away for free with a coupon at uh, Harbor Freight. Um, this will work fine enough. Or even if you have uh, one of the old style with uh, the VU meter, uh, that'll work too. Um, there's some things I like this better for, so I, I keep one of these old things around. But uh, let's dive in here and I'll, I'll show you how to test this. So the first thing we want to do is get this thing turned on. Uh, I've got it on DC volts, that was the last thing I was testing. We want to go down to ohms, which is this whole range in here. I'm going to just start at the lowest setting. And uh, when I touch these two contacts together, I should get something near zero. Yeah, good enough. We're going to call that zero. And so coming off of the three phases of the stator, I've got three wires. And uh, on this particular one, there's a couple of different white ones and a yellow one. Uh, many, many times on many motorcycles these will just all three be yellow. And it really doesn't matter which gets hooked up to which, they're all putting out the same thing. Um, what I want to do is test across two of these. So I'll test these two, and then these two, and then these two, if that made sense. So, you know, the white and the yellow, the white and the yellow, or the other white and the yellow, and then the two whites. And what I should get is the same reading across them all. This might be a little difficult for me to make contact in here, but yeah. So nearly zero. That's the other one. Same reading. And then, so that was both the whites and the yellow, and now I'm going to go white to white. Same reading. 
good sign so far. What you're looking for is sameness. Now, I want to test the ground, so the big chunk of metal in the middle of this thing, to each of these three. And I should not get uh, any sort of flow. So I'm, I'm looking for a very low number to nothing here. Now that's a good sign, but I just want to make sure I'm really making contact here. Scratch into this metal, nothing. So that's good. If I had some flow of electricity there, um, that would indicate that one of these uh, coiled up wires is shorting against the base. And a short is not good. Nothing. Nothing. Odds are pretty good that this is a good stator. Once we get it on the bike and running, uh, then I'm going to want to test with the engine running uh, that I'm getting, oh, probably 70-ish volts of AC out of uh, any two of these. And um, we'll try that later when the engine's running. But for now, this is a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. So there's three mounting screws and then a bracket here, here, and here to hold the wire, which eventually runs through here and then uh, comes out this hole and, I'm oh, sorry, comes out of here. So that's where this grommet rides. And um, from there, then that wire eventually runs through this hole passes through into the um, starter compartment and then up through here and into the bike. So this sets down nice and gently just like that. And the wire runs up through here alongside here and the grommet squeezes in right there. I'm trying to keep all of this filth off of the polished side and my camera. So for these three screws that go in here I'm gonna put the tiniest amount of uh, blue Loctite on these. I don't actually know if they call out for that in uh, in the service manual. Oh. Not getting a lot out here. But I can see that there was some on here before. I need to open this bottle better. There we go. And I'm not putting much on. I'm having to squeeze this bottle very hard. And my worry is it's going to go pew and squirt Loctite all over those electronics. So. There, I got it. Just a little bit, not much. And I'm going to get that threaded in quickly. And the next one. Thread lock just because you don't want this to loosen up. If it does and gets off center at all, there's a lot of vibration in here. Uh, if it gets off center, this is going to rub on your magnetic rotor, your flywheel, and that rubbing is going to destroy parts that are, well, they have a cost to replacing them. Plus, it's going to leave you on the side of the road eventually. And uh, I'm not going to torque these down too tight because they are just Phillips screws. They don't have to be torqued too tight because we put thread lock on them. That's what's going to keep them from loosening up. There. Now I can put in my wire guide 
or hold down, whatever you want to call it. Just like that. And then we have one little one here. And one final one over here. There we go. Now I've got to find the cap to my thread lock. Okay, so this is oriented on the bike like this. Here's your flywheel in here, here's your starter um, gearing and the output uh, shaft on the starter. And what we need to do is figure out which bolts go where. Uh, this one came with a set of old ugly bolts, but I've been trying to convert to these nice socket caps that look better. And so, to figure this out, I'm going to go to the parts finder online. And here is the part, and they are bolts, uh, that's a 5, 5 there, these are all 6's, and that one's a 6, and there's a 7. So what size are those? Scroll down, 5, 6, and 7 are 6 millimeter, 5 is a 45 millimeter length, 6 is 40 millimeter length, and 7 is 35 millimeter length. So now I know which bolts go where. Okay, so what I need are two 45 millimeter, five 40 millimeter, and one 35 millimeter. I didn't order a 35 millimeter. I've got 20s and 25s. Um, so I'm gonna first see if a 40 millimeter will do the trick, because I've got extras on these. And if not, I'm gonna cut five millimeters off of it. And where that one 35 millimeter goes is up here. Okay, before we put this cover on, I need to get the starter clutch put in here, so I'm just going to put an initial drop of oil in there. Get this shaft on. Actually, that can't go in yet, but there's oil flinging around here. Uh, I suppose you could use. Uh, engine assembly lube here, but uh, I think that might be a little bit overkill for these parts here. Try to line this shaft up, get that in there. So should only spin one way clockwise on on this clutch, and when then when the uh, Bendix engages, it'll well it'll turn it over the other way. Okay, so when I was disassembling the engine, I uh, loosened this bolt up because I thought I was going to be splitting the crankcase but later after seeing the transmission saw that I wasn't going to be doing that so uh, I have not pulled this rotor off but I do need to retorque this and this does need thread lock I'm not going to overdo it here the torque on this bolt is 43.5 to 50.5 pound-feet. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, so I need to have a wrench on there to hold the uh, rotor from spinning. This one has pretty big jaws, so I'm not getting the best bite on uh, nut, but I think I'm getting it enough. What I don't want to do is round it off. I may go to a smaller one, just be sure I'm being very gentle here. Yeah, because I'm not on there very far. I'm going to come up with something else.
else because the last thing I want to do is round these off. So this wrench is much smaller and I can get squarely on, but it's going to be harder to hold it with this. Because I don't have as good a mechanical advantage. What I do want is to have it tight. I may have to put a piece of pipe on this handle if I can't hold it. There it goes. I got it. So here is a good example of why you want to be using the uh, parts finder or parts breakout. There was a washer here that I didn't see. I didn't have it with the part. How it got separated, I don't know. It ended up around this bolt and I realized when I was trying to clamp down around the rotor that this thing was interfering, which made me think, does that even belong there? So I went to the parts finder, sure enough, there's only supposed to be a lock washer here, and so this guy goes here, the problem is there's supposed to be another one on the other side, and uh, I gotta go look for that, so. Now I know I have the one on the inside, there's also one on the outside, they're both exactly the same according to the parts finder. And sure enough, I found it stuck to this part right here on the other original cover that came out of here. So, parts finder saves the day. Don't forget those two washers. And again, we've got oil in this whole area, so seal the gasket. So, this is all oil in here, so I need to get some RTV down in this area and around this grommet and I can squeeze that down and get a good seal on that because that will have to be oil tight and then over it We want to route the wire through our gasket. Oops, got it upside down. That's correct. When I'm using gloves like this to, you know, smear uh, RTV, I want to pull that down on my fingers so I don't have a, like an air bubble at the end. It's clumsy. Then I can just get a nice even thin spread. So route the wire through here. Gentle, center as best we can, and the magnet's going to pull that thing right on there. We want to make sure we're lined up on that shaft, which I am. Okay, 45 millimeter here, these are all 6 millimeter thread, and here. And the rest are 40 millimeter, except for the 135 millimeter. I gotta uh, remind myself of where that one goes. All right, we'll get this torqued down. Okay, so they say that this one is the 35 millimeter. Everything else is a 40. So I'll just go ahead and get those put in. So just to try it, I took this 40 millimeter and put it in the spot where the 35 is supposed to go and it's starting to bottom out right here and I can still see I've got a millimeter to go. So this isn't going to work, but if I were to just cut maybe 2-3 millimeters off of this, that's going to work just fine. So let me cut it off. 
So normally when I cut a bolt off, uh, what I do is take a die from my tap and die set and I'll thread this on the bolt first and cut it off and then unthread this out and it cleans up the threads as I take it off. Um, these six millimeter bolts are a 1.25 pitch thread or thread pitch and uh, I don't have a 1.25. I've got a six millimeter one. Well, that isn't going to cut it. So the other thing I might do is just put a nut on here, cut it off, and then back the nut off, and I don't have a nut either. So I'm just going to cut it off and try to do the best job I can with those threads. Um, but that's, you know, typically my trick is to do that. Um, if you have a tap and die set and you have the right um, thread pitch, you can do something like that too. But I'm going to have to wing it here. So I've put it in my vise and um, since I'm damaging threads as I clamp down on this, I'm damaging the portion of the thread that I'm cutting off rather than damaging the part that I need. Uh, the downside here is, is I'm not cutting off much so I don't have a great bite. If this doesn't work, I'm going to take a much longer bolt, get a better bite on the damaged portion that I'm cutting off. But uh, I think if I'm gentle with this with a hand saw, um, then I should be fine. I'm nearing the end, so I'm getting a little bit less pressure and getting more gentle, trying to get a clean thread as I cut off. pressure at the end. So the blade jumped out once and uh, we'll see. I'm going to try to clean that up with just a rat tail file or something uh, and hopefully we'll have decent threads there. Okay so I'm going to be very gentle going in with this at first but the one thing I want to see is how much travel do I have? That's good, so I'm at least going to get that much of a bite in there. Uh, you know, we, we don't want that distance when we first bottom the bolt out to be too short, or you're only going to have a few threads grabbing. And then uh, I'm just going to back this backwards until I feel it click a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's threading in nice. Okay, so I just turned my 40 millimeter bolt into a 35 millimeter bolt. And like I did on the other side, I'm going to go 55 inch pounds on torquing these down. 55. Not much. I think that's all. I'll go once around. Just check them. Okay, 55 inch pounds. Um, got this a little muddy. I'm going to just grab that aluminum polish again and just by hand give it another quick polish. Remember, loosen the torque on the torque wrench before storage. Okay guys, um, this engine is done for the most part and um, I've already started working on exhaust. I think I'm going to keep that footage for a separate video and I'm going to end this engine series here because uh, I'm really not going to do anything more on the engine other than toss the starter in. Uh, that's not rocket surgery so um, you guys, I don't need to show you that. Um, it's done. I want to give you one final, it's not the last time you'll see it, but just one once around to see the completed engine 
Uh, I think it came out great. I don't know. When you're the person that does it, it's like when you cook a meal for friends, you know, they're all raving about your meal and you're thinking, eh, this, that, or the other thing I could have done better. But um, I think it looks good. You know, hope you guys like. Here's a once around. So hey, thanks for watching. Um, wow, it's been, I don't know how many months I've been at this, but uh, this engine has been one heck of a project, and uh, I think it's looking good. I'm very confident that it's going to run well. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of videos, I'm sure, on carb work, or at least a couple. And um, I'm going to get into that frame next. Again, I mentioned I'm working on the exhaust. Uh, I've just got to weld up a couple of pieces there. I have decided to try to work with the stock exhaust, you know, at least from uh, the cylinder head back to right under my feet. And then I got some, uh, uh, well, I got some mufflers I'll show you guys later in another video. But uh, hey, thanks for watching this series. These things are a ton of work, and so your comments are appreciated, and uh, the thumbs up are appreciated. And I'm just going to keep going because I'm having fun. And uh, thanks for watching.